2021 is looking good peeps. So on today's show, let's take a look at where we are heading in Australia with like EVs and renewable projects. Let's like take a quick tour around Australia and see what our like states and territories are doing in the space of renewables. Starting off with South, South Australia. And well, they've said that it could produce like more than 500% renewable energy by 2050 and become a national and international exporter of clean energy. Nice. And folks, this is key to our energy future. You see, unlike the 20th century where electricity was built to demand, renewables due to the sun not always shining or the wind always blowing need to have some built-in redundancy. And you'll see like in our near future, places like South Australia and Tasmania, heck, anywhere in the world, they're going to have two, three, four hundred percent renewable capacity in their system because they need to cover off when they're not actually making it in one zone, but they can make it in another zone. So it's going to be key to the success of renewables. And while South Australia's announcement about the 500%, it's going to be something like uh, producing green hydrogen. That is to say, um, through electrolysis, they're going to make uh, hydrogen using the sun or wind or whatever it might be, not fossil fuels, and pack the little sucker up and export it overseas. Yes, energy is going to be Australia's new commodity. And while the land down under with all its sun and wind and natural wonders means we're ripe to export energy overseas. Looking to my home in Victoria, several weeks ago the state announced like as part of the Victorian budget for 2020 to 2021, a massive $1.6 billion investment into improving like power infrastructure in the grid, decarbonizing energy systems, reducing uh, emissions while supporting more solar into homes. Details of the plan are included several renewable energy zones to like create local jobs and power more than 350,000 homes and shift the grid towards its renewable energy target of 50%. Okay, heading down south now to Tasmania and they're once again rocking 100% renewable energy. Gee, Aussie, how's that little statement of yours going? Hmm? It, you, you don't see like Tasmania, ACT, Iceland, uh, where's another Costa, Costa Rica? Um, so a few other Scotland. This this country is running on 100% renewable energy right now, and they do exist. It's not a myth. No, I think your book is probably. Yeah, <coughs> sorry, dude. Not sorry. Anyway, so Tasmania has achieved its 100% renewable energy target and no longer needs gas or coal power with the final two wind turbines commissioned at Gransville Harbour and they have like more than 200 gigawatt hours of surplus energy available per year. That's for the whole of Tasmania. That means that like, like uh, this much capacity versus annual demand. Yeah. 10,741 uh, I think it is versus 10,500 gigawatt hours. That is massive, right? It's not insignificant. And to say that you're getting all your energy from green sources like hydro and wind and a little bit solar, it's a little bit, you know, it's a southern state of ours, so it doesn't get a lot of solar. That is ultimately impressive. And well done to Tasmania. Hopefully in the near future, Tasmania will actually increase the projection of renewable energy. They're going towards 200%. And with the Manus Link, I think it's called the Manus Link, um, they're going to build this uh, Marinus. It's called the Marinus, yes. Um, they're going to build this a second interconnector to complement the Bass Link to help deliver all the excess energy from Tassie by 2040 to other states into the national electricity market. And that is great for everybody. Okay, let's shift to New South Wales, where in November, they announced three renewable energy zones, investment in electricity infrastructure, and solar and wind generation, plus battery storage. But sadly, slippy, slipping in there was a little bit of the Angus Taylor card of gas, because, well, that's so needed. Not. Here are some numbers for you. 12 gigawatts of wind and solar farms will be added, 2 gigawatt hours of battery storage, like Tesla Mega Pack, anyone? That could mean that the whole of New South Wales could run off batteries for about eight hours. Wind and sun did not apply. And here's one that is amazing. New South Wales announcement will mean that they're producing more renewable energy that's going to be built in the state than Victoria and Queensland combined. Wow, that is seriously amazing and great work. So 
for this segment, I've got like links to um, this story and more others. So please do go check them out and get the message out there to friends and family. Hey, you know what? I live I live in Sydney and this is what's happening in our state and we're going to be getting to this clean and greener future with thanks to our government and applaud them. Let them know what the good things they're doing because, you know, people like to lambast and pile on to people when they're doing bad, but people tend to ignore the good. So we need to really highlight that and that's what I try to do with this channel. Continuing our journey around Australia, next is Queensland where they've created a good problem in like a process of getting energy prices down, something that the AC did uh, to get the 100% renewable power themselves. They are going to go to businesses and ask for them to put their best offer forward to supply the state with at least 50% green energy by 2030. The result? Well, they were flooded with more than 200 projects that would support more than $93.7 billion in investment and potentially 57,000 jobs in the state. Yeah, there's no jobs in renewables. Hey, Matt, hey, there's no jobs in renewables. No, but of course there are. So pleasantly, they've committed in their budget like $145 million for the transmission, transmission infrastructure, which will make it easier for these renewable projects to connect to the national electricity market and will encourage more investment into them, plus an additional $500 million in solar and wind. Excellent work. Across the top now to the Northern Territory, and they too have committed to a 50% renewable energy mix by 2030 through, well, not a heck of a lot really, just a few million to look at whether or like a high voltage line from Darwin to Alice Springs would work. Um, I think the work's already been done for you there, guys. You know, just go consult the Sun Project guys who will be building that 3,000 kilometre uh, cable from Darwin all the way over to Southeast Asia. Yeah, Singapore and beyond, like honestly. Anyway, they're also going to be putting out there a $6.6 .6 million uh, grant system for solar and batteries to remote communities. And this is a great initiative, but I do kind of wish that Northern Territory was doing more and not relying on big business to get them across the line. Almost there now, and well, Western Australia, who plans on tripling renewable generation by 2040, detailed in the whole system plan, that's like a 20-year outlook on the future of WA's energy mix, four scenarios detailing how changes in demand, technology, and the economy could look. But many are saying that the plan is too slow, too dependent upon fossil fuels, and well, curiously, I wonder why. Well... What they could do is get there in actually five years if they were serious about it. Okay, finally, ACT. And well, in 2020, they went 100% renewable as well. And they're like they're buying in green power from South Australia, Victoria, New South Wales with plans to build their own solar and wind and battery storage over the next several years with that reverse auction stuff I told you about before. Yep. So they'll actually be truly truly bulletproof and independent in this space. So all in all, a promising new year ahead of us with I think like New South Wales winning this year on plan investment and working towards getting to like 100% renewables. Now, of course, keen viewers would note that I didn't bother doing like a federal level review. And well, that's because that we had this government who are pretty much still very firmly in the fossil fuel industry groups. Mr. Speaker. This is coal. Don't be afraid. The Don't be scared. Won't the treasurer you. knows the rule on crops. It's coal. And doing the bare minimum to get us to um, a cleaner and greener space. They've tried to um, allow ARENA to include fossil fuel projects, even though that wasn't ARENA's job or purpose. What else? They've got no um, targets for emissions. They've got no targets for cars and we're getting ice cars off the road. They've got no petrol standards. They've got no EV incentives like that, that paper last week was a joke. Um, so I'm not going to give them any more airtime. And look, I've detailed it more thoroughly up here. So if you want to go check it out, please do. Now turning my attention to EVs and incentives around Australia and well sadly there's not really a lot of change in this space. Victoria still offers like fuel efficient vehicles like EVs, a hundred dollar discount on the rego, but from July 2021 they'll be introducing an EV road uses tax uh, which for the most people will be about 300 to 500 dollars per year so that benefit has gone. The ACT is the best and they've got like no stamp duty or no rego fees and they've got an interest free loan of up to $15,000. Great work, again class leader ACT. 
So, thing is, right, we talk about this stuff and I talk about it week on week sometimes and nothing seems to change. So what we all need to do is get out there, talk about EV incentives and road user taxes. Um, speak to your local member of parliament, get involved with like the EV council or join your local electric um, vehicle club. Um, even if you haven't got an EV, you can still join them. You can be as an, uh, an enthusiast or some sort of, um, I forget the name for it, but you get the idea. Um, but it's important that we just talk about this and get people to understand how carbon emissions and particulate matter can go away if we move to electric vehicles. Finally, what EVs can we look forward to on our roads in 2021? Up soon will be the Porsche Taycan and the Nissan Leaf E Plus with its bigger 62 kilowatt hour battery and capable of doing almost 400 kilometers on one charge. In order, we'll see the Volvo XC40 updated 2021 Kona EV and the Mazda MX30. Around mid-year, BMW will release its much anticipated iX and i3 and towards the end of the year, I hope to see the Lexus UX300e. So that leaves the million dollar question. What, were, what or when, when will we see the Tesla Model Y? Yeah, well, my guess, November or December. That, I think, is when the Chinese appetite for the car will slow down and that we'll start to see them, that's the, the Shanghai Giga versions, in Australia. It's a big, bold guess, perhaps a stupid guess, but nonetheless, I think that the logistics in getting these cars out to consumers at cheaper prices will be something that Tesla will definitely explore. Thinking about the proximity of Giga Shanghai and its uh, trading routes to like the Asia Pacific region, remember, Tesla's mission is to accelerate the world to sustainable energy and transport. And Elon himself has said, well, to date, they haven't got yet a truly affordable car. And by actually manufacturing and shipping it from there, I think it will be cheaper for them, or for Australians rather, compared to bringing it out from America because of, well, Australian American dollar uh, translation and all those import tariffs and shenanigans that goes on. So when do you think? Put your best guess down below and yeah. I oh, wonder, we should make a bet on it. Is anybody able to like do something in that space? You know, put like a bet system on? Hmm. What else would I like to see? The Kia e Nero, which was like tried on a road and then will probably disappeared because, well, one of our politicians opened up their big mouth and basically said, no, we like ice cars and we're going to disincentivize buying EVs. So Kia Australia said, well, see you later then. We need to... Oh, we need to get these overseas where we've got these restrictions in place so we're going to have to meet them by bringing this car to those markets so yeah but nonetheless i don't want to bring it on a bit of a downer look these new cars coming to australia these new evs will mean that we get up to about 30 30 evs in australia that are available the breadth of cars that are going to be available to us is going to be so much better and well hopefully get towards a more affordable end of the segment which will then start to shift everyone's thinking around them so if you have an ev already great job well done thank you uh, make sure you're giving friends and family and anyone you can uh, rides on them let them have a drive let them know what actually driving an ev is and how similar it is to, to driving a normal car but a lot more fun a lot cheaper and yeah the maintenance cost near zero there's a lot of benefits there and with our emissions at 20 percent for vehicle transport in australia we can do a lot better in this space we don't have to wait for our politicians no but that would be nice if they did sign this petition for us whilst you're at it okay anyway here's to a better 2021 i do hope you're well I want to say a big thank you to my patrons, particularly Nigel Farrier, Tessa and the Gong, and Ashley Hill for supporting me at the producer level. And if you want to go join over there right now, you can do so for free. Free. Also, if you want to join the conversation, check out Discord link down below where you can join many others um, discussing all things electric vehicles, renewables, uh, tech, you name it. Um, go, go, go check it out. It's free to use and it'll be awesome to see you over there. Otherwise, you'll be good and you'll be green.